Kia ora! Hello! Welcome to the latest episode of Medieval Sewing Made Easy. This will in fact be part of a mini-series, How to Make Arming Points, this episode being Tubular Tablet Weaving. I am revisiting the technique of tubular tablet weaving from last week's episode of Medieval Sewing Made Easy, How to Weave a Paternoster, because I felt that it wasn't covered properly. I want to give a demonstration this week that is a bit easier to follow. Stick around until the end of the video too to see us draw the winner of the giveaway. I know you've been waiting patiently. How a man shall be armed from around 1450 mentions that a dozen tresses of arming points is part of what an appellant shall bring to the field. And Etymology Online offers the following meaning for the word tress, a lock of hair or braid. It may also relate to a braid of three or locks of three. So in short, I think this means it's good to have at least 36 arming points or um, a lot. So what will we make them out of? How a man shall be armed again comes to the rescue with the following. The arming points must be made of fine twine like that with which men make strings for crossbows. But what did 15th century European medieval folks string their crossbows with? Well, I'm not sure, but I've put the best sources I can find in the doobly-doo below. So anyway, those sources say that it was linen, hemp or sinew. And I have linen, so that's what we're going to use. I have a Gudeman linen sewing thread, which I suspect may be lightly waxed. I think anything with a fair amount of twist can work though. Silk might also be a good choice and worth experimenting with if you have time and budget. Silk yarn is also used in the braid we're going to use as an inspiration for our weaving today and that is Museum of London number 359. As before, we do a test to see how our chosen yarn looks when it's twisted into a braid, whether it suits our purpose in the quantities uh, in the warp yarns of the historic braid. The yarn is about the same width as the silk yarn used in this one. So this has 12 tablets. Each tablet is threaded in two holes. Um, so it'll be 24 warp yarns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's our 24. That should have a nice thickness for our purposes. Now I'm just going to show you uh, threading your weft onto your shuttle. So really simple one that I like to do, which is why I like the toilet roll holder, is just thread your yarn through there, squish it down and start winding. You're not going to need that much for this braid um, because it's only skinny. Just do your best to estimate. I think that should be plenty and so I'm just going to cut that off and pop a rubber band around it. And that's my shuttle done. The last and very important tool is this coffee table, which we're going to flip over. Okay, folks, now it comes to the part where we warp up. The general rule for the length of your warp when you're warping up is that you want around, I think it's around a 1.2 times the end, the length of your finished braid plus 50 centimeters. So, um, I'm dictated to by the size of this coffee table because I don't have any anything else that I can use. You could use uh, upturned stools or any other um, fixed point. So I'm just going to go ahead and warp this up. Uh, the reason that we want the extra 50 centimeters is because you just need that extra bit when you're tablet weaving. Uh, it allows some room for the cards to move when you're actually doing the weaving. What I'm going to do is take my first one. I've got all my tablets here, all 12 of them. And I just thread it through all of the holes like that. Okay, so I've got my cards threaded up with the two strands of yarn. 
they go through the two opposite holes on the cards and that's the whole pack threaded. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie those two ends. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to take our pack of cards and we're going to go from one post to the other with our pack of cards, looping the thread around each, each post and each time we go from one post to the other we're going to drop a card in the middle. So here we go. One. Keep your cards in line. Two. And try and keep your yarns fairly taut. Linen's a bit harder to control than wool and silk. Once you get to the last card, just drop it on the top of the pack there in the middle. Wind the tail of your yarn around the last around the post. Leave yourself a bit of a tail on your yarn and just trim it off. Before you move anything, just secure your pack of cards and the tail of your yarn. The next thing is to uh, organize our cards. So these all need to be um, facing the same way. They all need to be threaded in the same direction. There's S threading and Z threading. They all need to be either S or Z. So um, when you warp up in this way, they're usually going to be alternating S and Z. So you can see that this one here is Z and this one here is S and I'm going to link in the description to um, a tutorial about that but um, it might be a bit difficult to see on camera but they are threaded two different ways. So the way I'm going to fix that is just by flipping one of these cards and now it's threaded in opposite corners. So I'm just going to give it a half turn so it looks exactly like its neighbor. Now I want all of them to look the same. That one looks the same. This one, I flip it and I give it a quarter turn. This one is fine. This one, I flip it. I give it a quarter turn. So now all my cards are threaded the same. So I'm going to put the rubber band on them just to hold them in that position. Okay, so I've got all my tablet threaded up and I'm tied in. Uh, I've got my shuttle and the weft all sorted out. I'm pretty much ready to weave. I'm just going to weave my first pick now. A pick is one unit of weaving and it usually consists of um, placing the shuttle through the work and then changing to the next configuration um, to form a new shed. This is the shed, that's the, that's the gap in the work where the shuttle goes through carrying the weft. So here's, here comes the first pick. That's one pick. Here comes the next pick. That's two picks. And this time I'm going to give it 
of basing. And then turn cards. That's three picks. And then beat. I'll continue to weave and I'll see you soon. I want to keep going, but um, I've got to the point where uh, I've got so much twist filter up on this end of the weaving that it's now very difficult for me to turn my cards uninhibited. So what I need to do is change the way I'm weaving so that the twist on this end of the of the weaving setup starts to um, unravel itself. So there's two things that I could do about that. One of them is I could start turning the cards uh, in the opposite direction, which is towards me rather than away from me. The other thing that I can do is I can flip each card. You might've seen that in the previous video. So I would just flip, flip each card like that. Because I've got so many cards, I'm not gonna flip them. I'm going to just turn them this way. So I'm gonna reverse the direction of travel of the cards. When you do start reversing your twist, you also need to change the way you move your shuttle through the work. What I now need to do is go through the shed from left to right and then under. So I'll do my first turn in the opposite direction. Instead of going under, I go straight back through. And that's one pick. And again, I'm beating really hard because I want this braid to be nice and firm so that I get <clears throat> a nice, strong arming point. That's two picks. And away you go. I'll see you again soon when the braid's finished. So I've just reached the end of my warp yarns. I've run out of of warp yarn so uh, I'm just going to uh, take off the tablets and um, trim up my uh, warp braid. There we have it. One lace. It's got a nice solid structure. It's got an interesting texture. I expect that's going to work really well. This one We got just under 90 centimeters worth of woven lace out of our warp, so that's not bad. Now all that's left to do is to uh, wax this with some pine rosin and beeswax, uh, as described in uh, How a Man Shall Be Armed, and then to place, place some brass aglets on the end of each lace. So we've reached the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching this far. Uh, it's time to draw the winner of our prize, which is the bone awls. Oh, all of them. All, all of them. All of them. <laughs> so it's giveaway time. Hooray! Giveaway! So what we have here is we have the entrance. Oh. oh. All the names. All the names. <laughs> all of them. It's never going to get old. Okay. So we're going to draw them out of a hat. Out of a hat, you say? Yeah. Do you have a hat? Uh... Yes, I have a hat. Uh -huh. I have one. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll just draw them out of this hat. That's not going to work. Oh, that's not going to work. Luckily, I have another one prepared. Oh. <laughs> all right. So, here's all the names, all the entrants. Definitely not looking. Definitely not looking. He's going to draw the names. You're going to draw the names. I'm going to draw the names. I'm not yeah. looking. I'm not looking. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Are they, so all, you, are they all shook? Yeah, very shook. Okay, here we go. A little shook up. <laughs> this, is, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> where where are go. they? <laughs> there you go. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, we have a winner. We have a winner. The Who winner is Mike Khan. Oh, Mike Khan! Mike Khan's the winner. You're the winner, Mike Khan! That's so good! Yes. All right, so Mike Khan. We're going to uh, get you to email us at 
popularurbanum at gmail.com with your contact details. Now, once the COVID-19 lockdown is over in New Zealand, we will be able to mail you out your prizes. Look at these. So good. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. That's so Mike. good. Good job. That good job. So Thanks good. for commenting. Thank you to everyone who entered and commented on our video. We really appreciate all your feedback and support. It's been fantastic. Um, how many follow uh, subscribers are we up to now? Is it we just hit uh, 400? Is that right? Yep, just over 400. Thank you, everyone, for your support. We yeah. just couldn't have imagined that we'd get this far. So yeah. thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. We've also got some other news, don't we? Yes. Yes. Uh, we've uh, had Make Your Own Medieval reach out to us, um, and they've donated some more prizes, which we will be giving away very soon. So that's also very excellent. Yes, we're super excited. We're very excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you, Make Your Own Medieval. Yes, thank you. And um, stay tuned for more about that. Yes, definitely. Mm. Mm. But also in these times, remember, stay, stay safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and keep, keep reenacting. reenacting.